love this. Picture. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a, a perfume ad. This is a jewelry ad. It's a, it's a little slice of life that can be used in so many ways. The triangles, the, the blue, the stairs, the, the stark white of the clothing. I mean, it's something I feel I've seen before, but it's still well done. Yeah, I think this is just absolutely just what it's all about. Um, I think it's just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, the composition is just mm -hmm. stunning. I, I even like the clouds that are in that picture yeah. there. I think that really, to me, says a great deal. Um, and then there's also room for the tagline. Um, and I think that's an important thing. Sometimes as a, in the portrait realm, we tend to crop things a bit too mm -hmm. close. Uh, and I know when, in shooting for Met Bride, that's one of the things I've had to really learn to do is to photograph a bit looser than I typically would because I have to allow, allow room for the, the... Yeah, see, my background is advertising, so when I started doing portrait and the like, and I would be critiqued on stuff, and they say, what's all that empty space there, all that negative space? Well, that's where the text goes. You know, <laughs> that's where the copy goes. You know, you gotta, if you're shooting for stock, I mean, that's the thing to, to keep in mind is, is do two versions of the image, one that may be tighter and one that's looser so that uh, if someone wants to buy that image from you, they have a place to put their copy over it. That, you know, so the image doesn't have to be put into a block on the page and, and you know, with a, a frame around it and then the text outside. Make it so that they can put some text over it and integrate it into the page and make it a more modern looking design. Hey, John, would you like to address the lighting in this photograph? Let's talk about the way it was lit. I'm trying to say the light is and coming from the, a, above. The yeah. exposure. The exposure works. I mean, it's white, and it, everything is it still has detail throughout, even in the, the pants and her face. I mean, there's great highlights on her cheeks and her and her forehead, so we can see that the light is overhead and maybe slightly behind her because the cheek facing us is a little darker. Um, but there's so much ambient light. The light bouncing off the steps is filling in the side of her, her pants and jacket. Um, the exposure. It's, it's done well. I mean, whoever did this knew to open up to get that wall white. I mean, so many many times you do a picture like this, you may end up with a gray wall. But I, it, it helps that there's the deep blue sky there and it, to not trick the meter. I mean, it, it probably all averages out to a good exposure level that the camera can do. Mm -hmm. And a faster shutter speed to really pull that and make that, that sky go uh, nice and dark, dark. too. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Um, and this is, again, goes back to the difference in portrait and um, editorial. Because you notice the eye sockets are dark, because it's not about we don't yeah. we don't really care about that. Now I will tell you the cool thing that is that if you learn to do both, you can actually do uh, editorial for your portrait work as well. You can incorporate that in a normal portrait session mm -hmm. uh, for weddings. Absolutely, uh, do some uh, add some of this kind of concept to your wedding work. It's not traditional wedding photography, traditional wedding work. But boy, oh boy, do clients love it. They Brides are nuts about it. Mm -hmm. And that's actually what's, that's where a lot of that we've seen in the last 10 years, you know, the bride and groom sitting in a cafe, walking down the street, jumping in the air kind of stuff. Not that I'm recommending that, but <laughs> that's where a lot of that, that bend came from was that in brides magazines, we saw brides and grooms actually having fun and laughing and giggling and and that kind of thing, yeah. and it be so there's been a real crossover in the wedding market specifically to that editorial bent. But here it comes down to scouting too, and getting out there ahead of time and finding the place to do this, and figure out where the sun's going to be at the time you can shoot it. Mm -hmm. I mean, this looks like it did look like it was probably kind of midday, and it works there where we usually tell people you can't shoot midday because of those dark eye sockets and the light, but you can. You sure can. And then if you need to bring in other studio lighting, I shot, uh, when I shot for Met Bride in March, I do it twice a year, um, we shot in the desert in um, Las Vegas. And what we did was we used a portable lighting system, the Pro Photos um, um, 7D or something like that. Yeah, uh, I want to say the 1D, the, I think it is, I can't remember. Um, oh, the monolights. Yeah, it's a monolight, but it mm -hmm. also has a portable back, it has a battery pack that goes right on location. And it's very, very powerful. So I was able to overpower the sun and use my own my own studio strobe outdoors, and then use the sunlight as a backlight or as a an accent light mm -hmm. on those dresses. And it was, it was very, very effective. So you can even, by the way, you can also use a reflector outside um, using bright sun. Use a reflector to pop the light back in a bit. So don't feel like you absolutely can't shoot during the middle of the day. You can, but you have to. In my opinion, it's best if you do it kind of an editorial way like this so that the normal rules don't apply. Mm -hmm. Fantastic segment. Um,
Hugo Lopez, um, who's one of our photographers from the critique, was in the lounge and said, hello, that was my picture just shown with the white stairs and the blue sky. So just so you know, it was shot with natural light, and yes, it was midday. It was quite bright. Um, thank you so much. So, well done. Well, it's just, yeah, it's just thank so you. much fun to have, to have those guys out there. You know, you guys, I also want to do a shout out 